the city of Christchurch, a tranquil, picturesque place where chilly winters melt into sunny days. Unless, of course, you live at this house, because here behind closed doors lurks a DIY disaster of gigantic proportions. Hi, I'm Carla and this is Sophie, sleepy Sophie. And um, I'm pleading with you guys because we've like got this room here and it's been like nearly a year. When I, when I was three months pregnant, uh, we decided that we were going to renovate this room for little Sophie here and um, it just hasn't got finished. We walked in here and we stripped the wallpaper down. We walked out and we haven't been back for a year later. Now Sophie's staying with us in our room at the moment and it's driving me absolutely nuts. We're not getting much sleep and there ain't a lot of loving going on. I mean, I give Mars a lot of stick about this room, but I'm lucky he's got a sense of humour. I mean, take a look at this joke that I played on him just not so long ago. Can you open the door? I need to get in there. Daddy's got a sense of humour, eh, Sophie? Well, here we are at the scene of the crime, and, um, oh, Mars must have been in here recently. Um, unfortunately, yeah, it's not finished, just like the rest of the place. And uh, here we go, we've got a bit of work here, down in the corner there, you can park your car in that gap that we've got there. Over here, we've got a bit of a, a, a line, I guess, where uh, the silicone wouldn't match because the boards were put up wrong, um, Mars thinks. I mean, take a look at the floor, that has taken Mars ages to scrape that up, and like we're nowhere near done, so it's a nightmare. A little like the laundry, which also has a few flooring issues. So here we are in the laundry and uh, about 18 months ago we did this floor here. Now we polished it in the kitchen and we tried to bring it through into the laundry but if follow me we actually found that uh, behind the, uh, the washer here it's actually concrete. We've actually got the paint up there which we could happily finish off that door frame with but it just ain't going to happen and um, Sophie and I aren't very happy about it. Another thing we're not happy about is the garden. I love to entertain outdoors, but um, as you can see, it's a mission. And um, it's just one of those other things that Mars hasn't got around to doing. Um, he sat out here and had a beer a few times, um, but he hasn't bothered painting a fence, um, or pulling out the weeds for that matter. In fact, this entire garden is nothing but rubble. Nice one, Mars. And besides, if you guys came down here, I would guarantee I will make you the best scones you've ever tasted. Oh, the fun never stops with these two. <laughs> so, two people fall in love. They get married and buy their first home. Sure, it needs a bit of work, but together they'll turn it into a DIY dream. And they make a good start, but then baby arrives and it's a case of diapers and dinner times first and DIY a distant last. Sound familiar? Well, for tonight's DIY dilemma, or should I say disaster, we're in the Christchurch suburb of Fendleton with exactly that scenario. And if baby Sophie is to sleep in her own bedroom before she turns 21, it's going to be up to us to make it happen and fix up this mess. It's time to call in Mighty 10 DIY Rescue. <whistles> And of course, this is no small job. We've come prepared with one very large truck, otherwise known as our mobile operations centre. And manning the DIY ambulance at the bottom of this DIY cliff is our builder, Darren White. Outdoor all-rounder, Pieter Keating, and painter, Ben Brown. And of course, as with all DIY disaster stories, there's a perpetrator. His name is Marcellus Van Soest, better known as Mars. And you've already met his long-suffering wife, Carla, and daughter, Sophie, who, if she could speak, would be asking for her own bedroom. All right, you two. Let me just squeeze in here, just for a moment. Not a lot of work's gone on around here, Mars, since little Sophie was born, has it? No. Now, this is your chance, though, to fix it. Fix it up, because we're going to uh, fix up your house from hell. I beg your pardon? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is really, isn't it, you know? It needs sorting out. And you're going to help us? 
Okay. But it's going to be a very testing time in your relationship over the next four days, so we are going to keep you apart. You are going into rival teams. Carla, you're going outdoors with Peter to turn that rock heap into the outdoor entertainment area of your dreams. Right. And meanwhile, Mars, well, you're going to fix up that bedroom of hers, not to mention the laundry and the bathroom, and you've got our builder, Darren, to help you. Okay? I'll make the scones. That's a good idea. I told you not to eat the scones. <laughs> That's not very nice. Nice, is it? Well, um, excuse me, if you two would like to just disentangle yourselves, um, this is going to be a really interesting one, this one. And uh, did I tell you that we're moving in? Our first stop is Sophie's room. Yes, Mars started this little DIY exercise more than a year ago, though soon gave up when he realised it was going to be hard work. Oh, paper's coming off the jib. Going to have to take the worst of it off, skim coat the whole room, get the professionals in to do that, put a thin layer of plaster over the whole room, make it nice and smooth. Yep, it's a big job, all right. Thank goodness Mars has put himself in charge. Well, there. This is kind of the drawing I want the room to look like. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, just get the cotton area, nice curtains up, bit of a shelf, you know, yeah. a few toys, teddies. Well, Mars seems quite competent when it comes to giving the instructions. Pity about his DIY skills. Still, thanks to the wallpaper and accessories that have been sitting in the bottom of the cupboard for a year, Mars and the boys should have this room wallpapered, painted and soft furnished in no time. And then there's the backyard, which is the victim of Mars let loose with a sledgehammer. What's happening out here? <laughs> hey, well, it's certainly a pile of rubble out here. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> now, what do you want to do? Well, we've got a Mexican theme in our dining room, mm -hmm. so we're sort of wanting to bring it out here. Eventually, we'll put some French doors in there. Yep. Bring the inside outside or the outside in. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're kind of thinking the Mexican thing. Now, what would you think if we brought the concrete guy in and he would pave this whole area here mm. with, a, like, a really Mexican tinge as opposed to actually painting yeah. it? Yeah, we have two good. garden sections, one just by the fence over there and one behind us just here. Yep. We'll plant it up with tussock and grasses so it's got mm. that Mexican yeah. colour to it yeah. and decorate it with river stones and pebbles right. and uh, we'll just go from there <laughs> oh, of course your barbecue oh uh, yes my outdoor kitchen that's right we'll bring it out of the garage Yay. finally and of course that'll be your main focus to the outdoor area definitely now we've got yeah. a lot of work to do yes a bit of now, when it comes to landscaping, they say you have to destroy to create. Luckily, Mars has taken care of the destruction part, so now it's up to us to create the Mexican garden Carla has always dreamed of. Now, if you want to destroy a part quickly and efficiently, you need one of these. Women, if you're doing it at home, make sure you're wearing a shorter bra. As for you guys, a nice jersey should suffice. Meanwhile, here's the story of Mars and his landscaping adventures. It was a nice summer's day. I thought, oh, well, get out in the garden. I've always wanted to put a nice courtyard out there, so we had to get rid of the concrete first. Uh, so I borrowed my dad's sledgehammer and started banging away. Got rid of half of it, because it was only about that thick. And once I got to the corner a bit, it was about that thick. So, you know, the sledgehammer wouldn't go through it. Most of the actual hours have been put in by me. He has good intentions, but he normally ends up watching the TV. <laughs> But today, Mars and his armchair have for once parted company, and Carla, fresh from gardening, is now indulging her favourite pastime as she reveals the recipe for her famous family scones. So here it is. This is my great family secret. Alfin scone mix. Just add water. Mars would never know because he never comes into the kitchen. If only DIY came in a packet. Just add power tools and a sturdy bloke. Still, family yeah. baking secrets aside, it's on to the secret of true love. I first met Mars. Um, he was working in a service station. Well, Carla used to come in quite a bit. Um, just seemed like every single day. So I, I think she stalked me a little bit. I asked him out after about a week <laughs> because I knew he wasn't going to ask me. He looked really shy. I thought about asking her out and asking her for a phone number done and that. And she thought about the same thing at the same time. Mars when I asked him out, ran inside and he got a piece of paper and wrote down every single phone number he could be contacted at. Home, work. Brother's phone number, mother's phone number. Cell phone, whatever, all the phone numbers. So I knew it was King. And she said she was supposed to call me at 10 o'clock that night? I didn't call him, because I have this theory, you treat him main King King. I stayed up all, probably till about 1 o'clock in the morning, waiting for a phone call, which never came. But I called him the next night and um, we talked to, from about 10 o'clock at night till 3 o'clock in the morning and I just felt like I knew him. From that night on, we've probably never spent a night apart either 
physically or talking on the phone. Plenty of time tangled together chewing on each other's ears and not enough time on disaster area number three, the bathroom. You're going to paint the ceiling, eh? Yeah, we're going to paint it. Oh, you've got to stand it back, though, eh? Yeah, I suppose so. You've got to get onto that. OK, and look at the Grand canyon size gaps here. What up with that? I don't think my ruler was up to measure. All right, how about we use mine next time? Fair Place enough. those sheets there. Fair so, enough. What up with uh, the little silicon oh, there? No, no, that wasn't me, mate. That was Carla. I think someone's run their finger along there when it was wet, got stuff behind it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have to redo that. OK. And the, what are you doing up there behind the... Uh, behind the basin? Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to put some tiles, uh, just for a splashback. Yeah, and yeah. some tiles around a mirror. And what about the floor? The floor, well, what I wanted to do there was sand it and uh, put some poly over it. Though before we can make a start on that, there's a fresh DIY disaster going on in Sophie's room, as the sealer coat has actually soaked through the wallpaper, which means we'll have to strip the walls. And what are you going to be able to do about this uh, slight indentation of the wall, mate? What can you do to take care of that? Um, first, I'll put some reinforcing tape through here to stop it from cracking and give it a couple of coats of plaster to sort of help level the wall out. And, um, yeah, it should give Ben a nice surface to wallpaper or paint over. Ah, those professionals make it all sound so easy. But the question is, how did this room get in such a state in the first place? Oh, Mars! Well, with the wallpaper, I took a couple of weeks off over Christmas, you know, off to get the room ready. Unfortunately, uh, Carla's oven was cooking a little faster than it was expected, and Sophie came a month early. So I really only had that one week or a couple of days because we went to the hospital about three times before that. So we never, never had any time. As for the plastering, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I'm not a qualified plasterer or anything like that. Well, you can say that again. Still, I think we can safely say that we're making progress. In the bathroom, Darren's replacing the tile sheeting, which Mars cut too short. And in Sophie's room, the plastering's ready to be sanded, much to Ben's delight. And he's all set to paint the woodwork. But I understand it's been rotten down in here. Oh, we painted the uh, sealer coat onto the original um, jib board, and it bubbled all the paper, and the paper's come off, and we had to scrape that back. And now we've got a skim coat, the whole, whole room. And uh, once the skim coating's been done, we can um, put it another sealer coat over top of that so that when the wallpaper goes on it doesn't suck all the moisture out of the uh, out of the glue but even the best plans can be interrupted by a smoke alarm Good thing the rescue of this house isn't reliant on Carla's skills in the kitchen or Mars on the end of a tape measure. It's day two of our Christchurch DIY rescue, and most of Mars's little mistakes have now been uncovered. So we're left with, shall we say, a blank canvas to work on. Kicking off this morning with an undercoat in Sophie's room, courtesy of Carla's dad, who's no slouch on the painting front. Last night's fire alarm did cause a little bit of excitement, and yes, we did manage to get the smoke detector turned off before the fire brigade arrived, which just goes to show how important smoke detectors are. Other Otherwise, Carla might not have a kitchen this morning. And talking of things that Carla doesn't have, well, she doesn't have a backyard yet. She doesn't have a baby's room yet and no new bathroom, thanks to the DIY disasters of husband Mars. But the DIY rescue team is onto it. And I haven't told you about the laundry yet. Now that is another story. Scone, anyone? Look, I told you. Just put a little bit of grated cheese on it, stick it under the grill for a minute, and no one will notice. I promise you, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. I don't think so. If only fixing the laundry was that simple. Though we can't be too hard on Mars this time around, as this is one room he hasn't had a chance to ruin. Oh, mate, come on in. Show us your plan. Here we go. This is laundry. Yeah. All right, what I was planning to do is move the tub over to this side. Oh, OK, right, we'll need a plumber. Right. Uh, we need to put the dryer above the washing machine. Got a bracket? Uh, yep, just over here. Ah, good man. Yeah. All right. And what, what's all the uh, stripey business? Stripey business? Well, that's actually the... Uh, ah. Tongue and groove. T, G, and V. Yeah. Right, so a uh, bit of work for Ben then. Yep, strip it all back. And uh, what about the floor? The floor, we want to carry it on from the kitchen. Uh -huh. Wood paneling, just polish it up, and yeah. uh, then uh, 
do something with the concrete, because it's half concrete from through the wall. So let's get it done, mate, so you can uh, wash your hands of it. Sounds yeah. good. Let's get the ball rolling. No time for games, boys. We've got a laundry to create and an old concrete slab to jackhammer out. Oh, well, it can only be an improvement, not to mention the perfect job for Mars. Meanwhile, it's a red letter day in the bathroom, thanks to our master painter. His beautiful eye. <laughs> Keep banging, girl. Bang, baby. And your work going on out here, then? <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you might do without all the rooting and banging. No work could be done. <laughs> you two are like a couple of old <laughs> blokes out here. Can you smell the testosterone? Yes, yes. I can. <coughs> Rob, our concrete guy, has actually levelled out the ground, ready for 100 mil of concrete. Now, that's going in tomorrow. So prior to doing it, we're going to do the boxing for our garden. We've actually made a little squiggly line for it, so it's a nice little pattern. And also for the rest of the edging. So we've got our pegs in and then put the boxing in. Eduardo over there is actually finishing digging the hole for the sand pit, ready for our sleeper frame to go in. And then we're going to plant up, plant up the garden sections with the Mexican tussock and the rimstone. Mm. Well, then, a lot to do. Mm. Mm. Get to it, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, girl. Back to it. Oh, she's a slave driver, that Pieta. Still, this is supposed to be a Mexican garden, not a desert. I've done the sanding with the sanding machine, but um, I'm just sort of going over with the light because you tend to see a lot of imperfections. Oh, you yes, can I can see. You can see little ridges. Yeah. Not very many, of right. course. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I see you're using a sanding block. Yeah, this is an angled uh, sanding sponge, so it helps you get into the corners um, and also along the bottoms of the skirtings and whatnot. So I guess one of the problems with uh, home handymen is that they uh, tend to overdo it a bit. Yeah, they do. They tend to sand back to, past the top coat onto the second coat and also with the angles they'll sand right back to the paper. So. And I mean, of course, that will show through the paint. With that taken care of, it gives us a little time to dig up a little dirt on the man and the woman behind this DIY disaster. What was it that attracted you to Carla in the first place? The thing that attracted me to Carla in the first place was probably the looks, you know, the physical attraction was first. <laughs> uh, once I got to know her, and it only took really one night on the phone, um, I just knew, you know, there could be something really good there. So, you know, she's got a great mind and I love her for it. <laughs> Does that surprise you? No, I felt the same way. We spoke for hours and by the time I hung up, I just felt like I'd known him for years. It was nice. Oh, I just love him for yeah, What was it that made you think, yep, she's the one for me? It actually happened um, at a 21st up in Nelson with one of Carla's cousins. Carla was up in Nelson repping the week before and stayed up there and I took the bus on uh, the Friday morning. And on, all the way up on the bus, I just, you know, thinking of ways of proposing. I just knew, I just knew. I didn't know that. <laughs> you didn't know that? <laughs> I thought he asked me because he was drunk. <laughs> no, I've been planning it all day. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's made you cry, listen to this. The thing I've come, become to love about Carla now is um, she's a great person, a great wife, a, a great woman, and a great mother. And, you know, she's, I, 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 kind of, I couldn't have done any better all round. It's nice to feel special, isn't it? <laughs> well, you're a very lucky person. I am very, very lucky. He's luckier, though. <laughs> <laughs> Carla, you're the love of my life. Like I said on our wedding day, you know, you're my best friend and I love you and I hope we're always together and I love you for giving me a beautiful daughter, Sophie. He tells me that every day. And it always makes me cry. Oh, isn't that lovely? You know, he wasn't prompted at all for that. He just said it straight away. I know, he would. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. Oh, I love this job. And besides, it's got me off painting duty in Sophie's room, which is coming along a treat, by the way.
But fair's fair. Mars has to hear what his wife's been saying about him as well. Remember, they are separated for the entire fix-up. So the man's been doing a fair bit of wondering about what his wife's been saying. And it's a chance for us to hear his comments on how keen he really was on their first meeting. I thought, I can't just do this mumbo-jumbo talk anymore. I've got to actually ask him out. So I asked him out because I knew he wasn't going to ask me. And... Um, he ran inside and wrote down every possible phone number he possibly could, you know, where to contact him at home, cell phone, parents' house, brother's house. Yeah, it was, it was quite sweet. So I was pretty wrapped because he was obviously quite keen. Yeah, you were, weren't you? I was, yeah, yeah most definitely. Do you think that you would have asked her out if she oh, hadn't asked you? Yeah, I mean, at that same time, I was actually uh, you know, about to ask her. Um, I just didn't want to do it in front of my staff and you know, in front of all the customers and all that. I just wanted to do it outside. But as soon as we walked outside the door, she asked me. So She just got in first. She got in first, yeah. We'd had a few wines and we were up at my cousin's 21st up in Nelson and um, we just happened to be talking about marriage and what have you. And um, he just said, oh, well, would you like to marry me? And it really shocked me, and I just said to him, oh, no, you've had a few wines, ask me tomorrow. <laughs> and um, the next day came, and all day he was trying to ask me, and I kept, I kept running away, avoiding the situation. It's actually it's a really funny situation. And um, eventually he basically pinned me down and said, look, I want to ask you to marry me. Will you marry me? And I said, yes, I would. And how did you feel when she said yes? Uh, I was overwhelmed. I just gave her a big hug and <clears throat> I, you know, I, was, I was just ha really happy. Yeah. Mm. It's the best answer I've ever heard, apart from I do. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you would like to say to your husband, that you would like to tell Mars? Only that I love you. <laughs> love you? Because we just work. Our relationship is no effort and I really love that. You know, I really do. I just... We have a quite a unique relationship, I think, and we're very, very lucky and we appreciate that too. Simple as that, really. Yeah, soppy old thing. <laughs> You're obviously very in tune together. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a hug. <laughs> <laughs> You've obviously got it sussed, eh? I think so. Yeah. I've well, got a beautiful daughter to show for it. Yeah, yeah. And our beautiful house. Well, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> because, let's face it, there's a long way to go. As we continue our Christchurch DIY rescue, the disaster areas are slowly being transformed. Well, most of them. Now, the laundry. Oh, here's our sketch. Well, we've jackhammered out the concrete on the floor down here, so the search begins today for new floorboards to match. We've also got that unit, which is going to be fitted in just here, and tongue and groove, that's all got to be replaced. Now, also, as you can see, the plumber's been in and cut off the old pipes because we're repositioning the new tub over here. And, of course, well, the walls, they've all got to be prepped so that they can take their first coat of paint this afternoon. Hmm, easy when you know how. And the bathroom. Ooh, still seem to be having a bit of a problem with that there join. Yes, seems we a bit are. of Mars's handiwork, I'm afraid. So, Darren, what are you going to do to sort that one out? Well, I'm just going to cut down this join here with a standing knife just to separate the two sheets and pack this side out so it's even with the other one and gets rid of that shadow line. Oh, okay. So, well, that shouldn't take you too long now, should it? Now, where's oh, our no, plan? No. Here we are. What else have you got to do? Well, obviously, the mirror. I've cut the board out there for Mars. It's going to mm -hmm. put mosaic around that uh, mirror and then I've got to fix that later. We've got uh, scotia to go around the top, yep. skirting to go around the bottom, and the floor sander will come in later and prep the floor and polyurethane and give that a coat later mm. this afternoon. OK, and then a final coat of paint? Yep, that's, uh, that's Ben. Well, you don't need me then, do you? No, no. I'll don't. go check out little Sophie's room. All right, good on you. Now, this is already a remarkable improvement. I mean, you wouldn't believe, really, would you, that this is the same room as the one where our Mars here came in, ripped the wallpaper off, saw what a huge mess the jib was in, turned around, walked out the door and closed it behind him. Now, of course, we've got two coats of metallic undercoat on the walls so that Sophie can put magnets like this on the walls. Magnetic paint, whatever will they think of next. As for Peter and Carla, they're currently up to their ankles in concrete. It's a bit noisy. I know it's a bit noisy at this time of the morning. 
You've got to move pretty damn quick. I would have thought. We do. We're going to get a few more wheelbarrow loads in, and then we're going to squeeze it all out, flat it all out. Get in here, girl. You're going to roll your sleeves up and get stuck in oh, there. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it, definitely. <laughs> Listen, just in having your husband on, because your husband told me that he doesn't get a say in what colour goes where. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> He just has to give the yes or the no. Women have better taste than men Absolutely. doing colours. <laughs> I agree. There are some things men are better at too, but we won't go into that. <laughs> she doesn't stop, does no, she? she doesn't. <laughs> even at this time of the morning, we She's a shocker. You had a good night's sleep then, did you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's so we've got to keep going. Yeah, go on, sleeves up. Keep on, going. Go. Okay. I'll keep him right away from all that. Yuck. After all, sometimes it pays to leave things oh, to the God. professionals. <laughs> Old Carla, she thought being on television was all about glamour. If this was my perfect day, I would wake up in the morning and my hair would be done just like it is on Days of Our Lives and all my makeup would be perfect. Then Mars would come in in a sexy little box of shorts with breakfast in bed, but this time the toast wouldn't be burnt, the eggs wouldn't be runny, the bacon would actually be cooked and the tea would actually be warm. And then he'd go away and have a shower and he'd just shave a little goatee thing in here and he'd look like George Michael for the rest of the day, which would be brilliant. Then I'd go out with my whole family on a nice little picnic and then we'd come home and the whole house would be fixed and there'd be nothing for me to do. We'd have a nice romantic candle at dinner. Then we'd put Sophie to bed, have a few roly-polies in the lounge and then we'd probably have a nice massage and off to bed. Hmm, I wonder if Miles would agree. This was my perfect day. It'd be nice and hot on a summer's day. Head off to the golf links nice and early. Get down to the 19th, have a few beers with my mates. Uh, after that, head home. Maybe invite a few more friends and family around and enjoy our new barbecue area made by the DIY rescue team. Uh, chuck a few sausages and steaks on the barbie. Have a few more beers. Hopefully everybody won't stay too late. And, uh, that way I can have a nice early night, if you know what I mean. And Carla won't be able to nag me about doing anything else around the house. Oh, Mars, you romantic fool, you. As for his backyard, outdoor living is being created before our very eyes. Not forgetting this was once a weed-infested no-go zone, though of course a good man has a good reason for why he never got round to finishing it. I'm not a real handy person, I admit that. Um, if I get stuck into something and someone shows me what to do, I can get in there and do it. But I need just someone to show me how to start it off. Well, believe him or not, the backyard's making a colourful recovery now that Carla is nursing it back to life with a little colour oxide in the concrete. Doctor, I think he's dead. <laughs> Let's put a bit of colour in his cheeks. So the secret is apparently it's like a slapping action, you know, like so. I'll give you 20 bucks if you hit the guy in the corner. <laughs> Actually, that wasn't the professional finish we had in mind. To achieve a good finish with your troweling, you need to apply your colour while the concrete is still nice and soft. You'd like your trowel to be able to suck to the surface like that so you can't pull it off. This will give you a nice smooth finish and not leave too many lines in your finish. OK, the surface mixing of the concrete is almost complete, but we've got to get cracking on a mosaic. It's setting quite quickly. Now, as you can see, we've already started over here with all sorts of different colours, but the tile pieces aren't actually setting right into the concrete. So what we're going to have to do is do an extra coat just on top of the border area, and then we can wash off the tile bits with an acid wash tomorrow to bring out the colours again. Well, my Mexican garden is just about finished, but there's one more thing I just have to do. Well... That ought to get me a bunch of flowers this week. Never mind the flowers, wait until Carla sees what's going on inside the house, such as the newly painted bathroom with polished floors and a few trendy accessories. OK, what we're making here is a mosaic tile mirror for the bathroom. Now, firstly, we've got to work out a backing sheet for the mirror and the tiles themselves, and that's what I've done here. I've put the mirror tile down, I've marked around it, allowing enough room for grout gap. Then we've got to place the tiles around it so we know the size and the size of the tile we're using. Then we're going to break the tiles up on a sack and we're going to use gloves so you don't cut yourself and get stuff in your eyes just to be safe with that. Then we're going to go to a template. This is the same size as the board we're going to use just so we can have a play around, get the pattern right before we actually glue it down on the piece we're using. Here we go. Not bad for a builder. Now we're going to put the mirror on the backing board. We're going to glue it with no more nails. So now all that's left to do is to transfer the tile pattern onto this board and we're going to put those down with a tile adhesive. With 60 more pieces to go, Darren should be finished sometime next week. Though no such problems out the back. The concrete's done, so Pieter and Carla are using railway sleepers to create a sandpit for Sophie. Well, we've put the sleepers in. 
and the weed mat down and it's just about ready for the sand and I can't wait to get little Sophie in here to play in the summertime. It's so nice under here, we've got the trees for the shade and late at night we can put Sophie to bed and Mars and I can come out and play in the sand pit. She's got a one track mind that Carla, maybe this is where it belongs and this last little broken tile belongs here. Well, I finally got rid of Darren. I mean, it took him long enough just to do a corner, and we needed to get him back in the laundry. Because a builder, I am not, and someone's got to keep an eye on Mars, as well as overlay the concrete floor with our brand new tongue and groove. Just something to think about when you're laying timber over concrete is to use something like this. Mouthoid, DPC, damp course. It just stops the moisture coming through the concrete into the timber so that it preserves the life of it and stops the timber rotting. And as an extra precaution, I'm going to glue it down so it just holds it in place. And speaking of glue, there's plenty more in Sophie's room, where we're ready for stage two, the wallpapering, guaranteed to keep us working through yet another night as we bring order to Mars's DIY chaos. Chilly Christchurch and the DIY rescue clock is ticking. Mmm. Well, you two, it's been a very long road to the rescue of this house, but this is it. Now, we have got to be out of here by 2 o'clock because we're heading across country on another rescue mission. So you've got until 2 o'clock to get everything finished. I mean, finished properly, Mars. Absolutely. Are you confident? I'm very confident, yeah. Even when you see Sophie's room, you'll be confident. Oh, you reckon? Yeah, no doubt. Don't say too much because you'll support, <sighs> spoil the surprise. Oh, she'll cry anyway. <laughs> That's all right. We like an emotional ending. <laughs> That's fine. What about you, Carla? Are you confident? Confident? I'm pretty confident we'll get that backyard finished in about three hours, so... All right, yep. then. Well, you two had better go get to it. No peeking. Go on, you head okay. off. That's right. Well, looky here. Our concrete is thankfully hard. Now, the reason we put the tarps down last night is because if the frost got on top of it, it might lift up the surface of the concrete and bubble it, and we don't want that at all, but it looks fantastic. Now, we've also got to get the sand and the pebbles in the garden areas over here. We've got the sand and the sand pit to go. We've got the paint on the walls to go. And we'll be done. Woo well, they may not be perfect, but overnight our men have got quite a bit done. They've fixed the missing boards on the laundry walls and they've finished the first coat. Meanwhile, Darren's replaced all those floorboards and the floor sanders have been in to do their stuff. But will it ever look like Carla's dream? In the bathroom, there's a second coat of Raphael red on the walls and look how good those tiles are over the basin. I'm sure with a little more TLC, it will soon look like this. And with a little bit of sealer, Mars's messy work with the hardy glaze will soon be fixed. Right, well we've finally got rid of this horrible hardy glaze join that was there. I, put it, I pulled the sheets out, put a packer behind it and brought it back out even with the other one and we've lost that horrible shadow line that was there. Now all there is left to do is to silicone the join. Just make sure you run it in smoothly and slowly and just enough so it doesn't protrude the size of the gap that you're doing. Right, now we just lick the finger and run it smoothly down the gap. And to keep Mars's sticky fingers out of the bathroom, we've assigned him to lunch duty, leaving us professionals free to create. Hey, Darren. Yo. What do you think of my mirror? Oh, I think it looks great. It just needs a bit of sanding Ooh. and painting around the edges. Got it? Yeah, that no, looks good. We're indulging in Carla's passion for mosaics. I mean, you can't really miss it in the backyard, can you? <sighs> and she's always wanted a mosaic mirror in here. So we thought maybe best not to leave it to Mars on this occasion. No. Oh, no, look! <gasps> oh. <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> Oh, but how good does this look? The wallpapering is all finished, and uh, the blue and yellow, well, they go really well together, but then you can't really go wrong with blue and yellow, can you? Just a little bit of dressing, really, to do in here, and then little Sophie can move out of Mum and Dad's bedroom at last, much to everyone's relief, I would imagine. And what are you finishing off here, Ben? Well, just putting up the holes left by the nails on the dado rail here. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to uh, mask it up and wax it. And why are you going to do that? Well, it brings out the natural grain of the timber, and we've decided against the high-gloss varnish finish for the more natural look. Cool. Well, look, I'm going to douse some flames out there and uh, you head off out the back. Where our outdoor all-rounder has outdone herself. Now, I'm just washing off the slurry of concrete and colour off the mosaic tiles. Now, Rob, the concrete specialist, said it's better not to use an acid wash on such young concrete. So I'm just using a bit of jiff and a bit of elbow grease and I rub it away with a sponge and they look just like new. Only 285 mosaic tiles left to clean and that will complete our touch of Mexico right here in Christchurch. 
But what will Carla and Mars think of their new look home? And will there be more romance on the horizon now that baby Sophie is about to have her own room? We'll find out after the break. In not-so-sunny Christchurch, our DIY rescue is just about complete, bar a few finishing touches. Ah, primos. So with everything on the level, all that's required is my little work of art, a cheeky vacuum, a few shelves, and a few novelties in the garden. Your new outdoor kitchen. So easy Yay. to install. Amazing what you can do in just three days. Remember what this garden used to look like? A rubble-infested bomb site. Even though Mars had always intended it would look like this. He's in for a real surprise. Now then, are you ready for this? Yep. I don't think you are somehow. You don't think so? No, I don't. I don't. Oh right, I'll do the I'll do the uh, honours with the okay. blindfold. You can do the music. Drum roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> ready? Yep. Steady. Okay. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Whoa, that, that's great. Oh, wow. Different? Yeah. <laughs> Where are my weeds? <laughs> <laughs> All gone. Thanks to your lovely wife. Oh, wow. I'm the one who's most excited. Oh, look at that toilet. <laughs> you won't be sitting on that loo ever again. <laughs> no, not me, but prickly. Got a sand pit. Yeah, sand pit. Cool. Yeah. And what do you think about all the mosaic? Oh, it looks the brilliant, doesn't it? Very good. Table and chairs. Yeah, I see that. Table and chairs. I've always wanted some of those, haven't yeah. we? Carla, your dream garden. Oh, absolutely. I was in tears for about 20 minutes before. I just couldn't believe it. It's just, I'd look out that window every day. And I'd look at the way. <laughs> uh -huh. She'd look at the weeds. Oh. They were good weeds. <laughs> and they've all gone now. No weeds are good weeds. <laughs> and now I just don't have to look out that window and worry about it anymore. It's just great. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Great. You work really great. hard. So there, that's, that's the great. first of our surprises for great. you. Yep. And, oh. um... <laughs> Any more tissues? We've got plenty of <laughs> tissues. You'll be fine, love. OK. <laughs> and we're going back indoors now for your surprise, OK? Yes, it used to be the bathroom from hell. Nothing at all like Mars's master plan, but we soon sorted that out. You ready for this? Yeah. The first big surprise. OK. Are you ready? Yep. Get set. Wow. What do you think? Oh my god, look at that. <laughs> look at the mirror. Do you like it? I love it. We've um, finished off your windows. Oh, that fixed the wall. The hardy glaze is all evened up, siliconed. Oh, look fixed. at that. Fixed. Polish the floorboards. Yeah. Oh, no more white stuff on the floors. <laughs> and the splash back, eh? Yeah, yeah. That looks great. Oh, I'm very pleased about that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and? Oh, the shower curtain. Oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, it's so nice to have it finished. So what will it be for your bath tonight with candles? I'm having three baths tonight. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now, next surprise coming up, so no peeping. Don't spoil the surprise. Take her out. Right, eh? <laughs> Closing. <laughs> A few days ago, this laundry was drab in the extreme, but once again, we took Mars's unfinished plans and made them into reality. Right, keep those eyes closed tightly, Carla. Right, you ready? Ta-da! Oh, my God. It's a bit different, isn't it? It's a flash laundry, isn't it? Oh, it used to look so disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> your lovely new unit that Darren built. Watched by your husband, of course. Oh, I'm lucky he didn't get involved. Oh, come on. <laughs> and what did you actually do in here? I did quite a bit in here, thank you very much. Oh, it doesn't look like it. It looks too good. Hey, <laughs> I, was, I was up until 3.30 this morning helping paint in here. Oh, yeah. I do appreciate it. Plus the prep work. And he watched Darren make the cupboard. And I watched Darren make the cupboard, yeah. I helped him lift up the dryer. Oh, yeah, well, Darren couldn't lift it by himself anyway, could he? <laughs> <laughs> and we've moved your tub over there. Yep, and yeah, look at the dryer up top, above the washer, the way you always wanted it. You've done a great job. <laughs> we had to replace a bit of the TGMV around the walls. Where yeah, the floor. No old lino. I yeah. weren't sure what to do about that, were they? Were they? That no. was just such a mesh. So it's great that they've done that. What do you think of the colour? It's great. It's funky. Barbados <laughs> blue. 
So you're happy then? I'm a Thanks, bit relieved but... actually. <laughs> <laughs> this was a scary one. Now we have one last surprise for you, the big surprise. So uh, we need you to close your eyes again. We'll keep you in suspense for a little bit longer. Ready? Come on then. Just wait till Carla sees this little number. Say goodbye to the half-stripped walls and what was a decorator's disaster, for Sophie's new bedroom has exceeded the plans in every way. Squeezed very, 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 very tightly. Come on in. Mars, you stand round there. We'll just shut the door and then we'll look, walk back so we get as big a view as possible. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Hurry up. Ready, steady. Open your eyes. Oh my god! Oh my god! I take it you oh. like it then. She's like a fountain, this woman. It's not bad, is it? I believe that it would look like this. Now you have got a new dado rail, Rimu dado rail, and it's magnetic paint below that so that Sophie can, when she's older, can put magnets all around the walls. All her little knickknacks and her toys everywhere. That feels so cosy in here. Doesn't it? Your cot looks great. That took some dressing, I tell you. <laughs> and, you. And you made the mobile, didn't you? I wanted something really fun and bright for her and I couldn't find anything that I liked, so I came home and made it. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what do you think? Is it, is it a dream come true? Absolutely. We could never, ever have done this by ourselves. Never in a million years. No. Well... That's why we got you guys. Especially not you, Mars. No. Yeah, it's a pleasure to help you. <laughs> But we are very well aware, Mars, that uh, you could revert to your old habits and your DIY disasters. So, I have a list of things here for you to do. Six things, one a week for the next six weeks. We will be phoning to check up on you to make sure that you've done it. Will you meet that challenge? Um, yeah, I think I will. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. oh yeah, we knew you would, mate. mate. But do you think he'll manage it? Do you think he'll manage it? I'll kick him up the bum if he does <laughs> it. Well, I think there's a little lady here who wants Sophie. to see her room. Oh. <laughs> this is your new room. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it from Mighty 10 DIY Rescue here in Christchurch. We'll see you next week. So here it is, this is my wonderful new bathroom. I just can't believe it. They've actually painted the walls, the windows are done, we've got a new shower curtain, no gaps there, you can't park a car in there anymore. We've got a fantastic mirror and the splashback to match. And look at this, Mars is botched up in the wall, all fixed up. That's something else now I don't have to worry about when I'm sitting on the loo. My floor, look at my floor. I don't have to worry about it not matching the kitchen anymore. And my laundry tub it looks as good as new. And the paint, it's not on the shelves anymore, it's on the walls. And here we go into my favourite room of the house. Well, this is it. This is my little Sophie's room. It looks beautiful. We've got pictures up on the walls. We've got my mobile up and a new light. We've got magnetic paint here on the walls, which no longer are bowed in the middle. Thank goodness for that. We've got new curtains. We've got wallpaper up. It just looks, it looks so awesome. I'm just totally overwhelmed with it. Thank you so much. DIY Rescue is brought to you by Mitre 10 with the assistance of Dulux, Polly and DeWalt. For more expert renovation tips from tonight's show, see this month's Your Home and Garden magazine on sale now. And we've uh, safely uh, covered the wires up before with the plumber so they don't make contact so we don't get an electric shock. As for Mars's to-do list, we're pleased to report the bathroom shelves and the heated towel rail have gone up. Only catch, it was Carla who did all the work. Though Mars has started on the front garden and clearing out his shed. Oh well, Rome wasn't built in a day. Oh, leave me alone, it's late, John.